Hello, welcome. I'm American Grayson with Pure Politics, and I'm here with one of my best friends who does amazing work in the conservative movement. Nikasia Jackson, the host of the JFK Report. And before we get this discussion going, I always start off with a Bible verse. And we're going to be looking at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13 through 16. Be holy. Therefore, with the minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires that you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 through 16. It's a pretty good verse. We didn't talk about the verse beforehand. I wanted to be surprised. <laughs> uh, I think that relates a lot to uh, our experiences at TPUSA. But before we get started, I'm feeling a little bit tired and I need some energy. So what do you say? We pop open some bang energy drinks. And a lot of this is because our friend Davey Michaels was just banned from Instagram. Huge influencer very much conservative doesn't have any fringe opinions in a, in a way he's very uh socially acceptable yes, he, and they banned him for speaking the truth yes, he grew up very religious he grew up in a christian household he he's told me that he was homeschooled and he had to read a chapter from the the bible every day before class so he grew up very christian and like i said he isn't he's He's not. He's outspoken, but he doesn't go on the cringe side. You know, it's just like he's just. He don't, yeah, he, he avoids the he don't cringe. Even, he don't even ride the line. He's like he's just being just a regular guy. But he sponsors Bang. Shout out to Bang and shout out to Davey and America First. Yeah, cheers for Davey. All right. So, as everyone knows, we stay here in Arizona. Turning Point USA just had their yearly convention, and it was hosted here in. Phoenix in downtown Phoenix, about 20 minutes from me. And it was a great turnout. You know, a lot of people came, a lot of media outlets, just a lot of regular everyday Americans, conservatives, libertarians, just anyone who's just wants to hear other ideas and, and bring this country back to America first standards. Yeah, America Fest. We even had Shoe on Head that was there, and she's a bit of a socialist. Uh, my experiences in LA, I really feel like. This isn't so much a pro-Trump movement. This is more of a pro-American movement. It's bringing a lot of people together who normally would not be on the same team. Yes. There's a lot going on right now. And it was actually um, quite a great, great experience for what was going on that day, just trying to bring people together and get this country where it needs to be at. But that was my first time. You know, I've been working with the JFK Report for about over a year now, and I've been doing stuff locally, as you know, and turning point, I was really able to get my name out there and my work. You know, I, I was great. Uh, Elijah Shapo, he interviewed me for 10 minutes. I was very grateful of that. And then I had an, a couple other networks interview me, you know, it was a very humbling experience. You really get the name out there. and Yeah, you were killing it at this event. I mean, you... yeah, I didn't even go to any of the, the speeches. I just, I just stayed in media row and I was just going in circles, just talking to people, interviewing people. Passing on the car and just seeing what's going on. Heck yeah. A lot of this movement, we need people of all different types doing all different jobs. We don't need everybody doing the same thing. And what you're doing is actually a lot of what we need. There's not enough people out there trying to get conservative voices into the mainstream because they're censoring them so heavily. We need a lot of these people, if you're motivated, go out there and do it, to start interviewing these conservative candidates that you want to get elected. Start getting their face out there. And you did excellent work finding those guys that we do want to get into office that represent American values. Yes, exactly. And I appreciate that. And especially being here in Phoenix, I wish we would have saw more of our Phoenix politicians there. I mean, I saw, uh, you know, uh, Anthony Kern was there. He's running for state senator. He is a former state senator for Arizona. But then you had, uh, what's this uh, guy's name? Um, Mark, like, Fin Mark Finchman. Yeah. He's running for, uh, he's a state rep, but he's running for secretary of state. And Katie Hobbs is probably going to be running against him again after the whole shenanigans of her situation. Ooh. So uh, I'm not a big fan of Katie. Oh, I know. Uh, so, and I think that's what, and I think there were a few speakers that were talking about, you know, get involved locally. And expect if you're coming to a city like Phoenix or a different state, if they go to like Texas next year or Florida, 
what they should really focus on even next year is getting more of the local and state politicians there next time and really focus on the the grassroots right there and not because they they had some big names and they were thinking you know nationally but what about locally especially when it's being hosted in this city and in in this state and there's a lot happening in this city and state that could go either way right now especially well, maybe maybe we could do something like that get the local politicians on board uh, we know that our arizona state senator wendy rogers had a huge presence yes. at this event and she's a fighter and she's not only a fighter she's a winner she's getting a lot done in cons- in regards to getting information out for the election audit and making sure that we finish what has to be done a lot of these people they wanted okay the audit let's uh, forget about it they wanted to have that and wendy rogers is going not the extra mile she's just doing her job and that's yes. how bad things have gotten in america she's just doing her job and making sure that we are getting results for this audit yes the results and i don't even did they even talk about the audit when you were sitting i didn't go to any of the speeches did they even bring up the audit or anything talk about that i missed quite a deal of quite a lot of the speeches and i did not hear much about the election audit much less about election integrity in america i did hear about it in my individual conversation with people. So people are definitely cognizant and aware of election integrity. They're still very concerned about immigration. Uh, The people individually have not forgotten about that. But in the speeches, it does seem that they did not focus on election integrity at all. I think pretty much, I think the turning point USA convention is just pretty much just getting all like-minded American people, conservatives, libertarians, nationalists, moderates, independents that just think that way, that want to put America first. I think it was just pretty much just a big convention and just get people together, see what's going on and hit on big ideas. Yeah. And it I was just good um, just to connect to people. I really got my name out there. And there was even, I, I was even told by some people, well, I had people coming up to me like, hey, dude, you're the JFK report. Never had that happen to me before. Yeah. And I had, you know, Elijah Schaefer told me, say, oh, dude, I've seen some of your work actually. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. So, you know, I'm for, for how small I am, that's why we you know i'll go off that people need to get really involved in their if you're in a big city or if you're near a city and you want to get involved in stuff like this i I just use my phone just go to your rallies go see what's going on at the capital there's always something going on in people's capitals and bigger cities so many political. times they'll find themselves to be the only person recording there yes. so it's, it's very little competition mm-hmm. for the people who want to make a name for themselves in this. Uh, for me personally, this is about an actual movement and saving America. But for the more narcissistic people, I want to get everybody in promoting this and getting the truth out there. It's very little competition. So you go to these rallies and activism. It's You're the, sometimes the only person recording. Yeah. It's, because we're already used to doing that. We don't want to do that. I mean, we already know when you go to a, a rally or a speech, whatever you want to call them, there's a... We went to the one uh, downtown last week uh, in front of uh, Attorney General Mark Brown. Oh, yes, yeah, the uh, protest. They, you know, they had a couple media people there. You know, there was obviously like Phoenix Fox, Phoenix NBC, like their journalists and whatnot. But there was only like you and I and maybe a couple other people there that were actually recording. And the majority, so that's maybe like we're five, definitely- 5% of it. And the rest yeah. of the people were just there watching and just talking. Because other than that, you have the fake news that that are just recording stuff and writing hit pieces and doxing and making up their own opinions by stretching what actually what was actually going on that day and they want to spin it. But when you have guys like you and I, and uh, that's where I met uh, the German girl, uh, Vicky. She yeah, was, Vicky, she was amazing there, you know? person. So when you have people like us doing that, it counters their narrative. And, he, and, he, and he, when, you, when you look at the reviews and you re, read the reviews, they're losing numbers and more people are going to pages like you, I, and other people like Blaze TV or... Uh, what is or it? Vicky. Daily, Daily Wire, Vicky, yes. He yeah, we yeah. were definitely, I think, in the top five most influential people at the Attorney General protest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the can- the uh, candidates running excluded because the, they're pretty popular on their own. But back to TPUSA, I noticed that this was a very positive event. It was yes. incredibly good for networking. They had a lot of great names. And these people were easily approachable. It wasn't as if they were part of the elite. And I know the media likes to make politicians larger than life, kind of turn them into celebrities. And they were regular people. And we should hold them accountable to do their job. Yep. 
And I really liked how the TPUSA set it up that I could meet these people and talk about my concerns and let them know about some of the things happening to me. Because I've been attacked in the media by CNN. They're trying to go full-blown character assassination. They've done it to you. You have other stuff going on with uh, legality stuff concerning uh, January 6th. Massive peaceful protests, by the way. And we definitely let our voices be known that day. But... TPUSA, great format, easy to meet people. I loved it. Yes, it was very easy to meet people. And, you know, I was able to meet Elijah right there, and I told him my situation. As soon as I showed him all my news articles, what they were doing to me, my Safina, he said, go talk to uh, Savannah. Let's go sit down for an interview. You know, yeah. So it's just like they were easy to approach. You know, I, I even had uh, Sheriff Lamb now. He's at the point now where he, every time he sees me, he smiles and he grabs my arm, <laughs> you know, because we're just doing good work. American Patriots. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Some, someone has to do it. And now one thing, you know, it was a very great turnout, networking, the connecting. I think if Turning Point USA really wants to hit it home next year, I think it's time for them. Everything else is good, but I think it's time for them. Like, we have to stop canceling out our own people. It's, yeah. If they, if they really want to make this event even huger, if they, really, if, they, and they, if they want more money, even though it's not about money, but they really want to do some. It, you know, like Alex Jones, Nick Fuentes, a Tim Pool, these people that have been really canceled or censored or attacked. It's time to bring these people on. They bring more people. They bring their people that follow them. I Yeah, TPUSA, a lot of the speech is focused on things that Alex Jones or Nick Fuentes have been saying since 2015, 2016, well, 2017. Been, yeah, even when Alex Jones goes way back. Though. Yeah, yeah, Alex Jones, of course, way farther back. Nick, Nicholas Fuentes more recent. Yeah. And it was so interesting to see this transformation of TPUSA from Conservative Inc. And they still have a lot of conic stuff going on. But this transformation into more of an America First party, promoting these America First values, when initially, several years ago, they were condemning these people. So I really like the direction TPUSA is going. I really like how they're adopting the America First principles into mm-hmm their value system and uh, ultimately out of that I would like to see at least some sort of reconciliation with these previous people like some that you mentioned yeah because these these previous people who were banned from the movement social media everything they were leading with these ideas warning us for years and I think it's it hurts us more when we cancel out or blacklist our own people we need everyone we could get I mean Yes, some people's ideas, you know, their ideas and this is their beliefs, but it doesn't mean they're not a good person, you know. These they've been exposing things for a while. And we and like I said, these people could bring numbers. That turning point USA convention was huge. It brought in thousands of people. And if you brought yeah. in, if you brought in these other people Massive energy there. They, Massive young people energy. If they would on blacklist some of these people that we mentioned, they would need that convention center they would have to go they would probably have to use one of the arenas next time. Definitely. Like, Definitely. Um, Especially if, if they had Trump go speak, they probably would have had to use um, the fairgrounds arena. Well, Nick, Nick Fuentes reaches over 100,000 people with I his know. show. Uh, I don't know the total numbers, but that guy is massive. He yeah. could definitely bring out a lot of young people for the yes. conservative movement. Oh, yeah. It's, and other than that, it was a great event. Like, you know, we could go back and forth with networking. You know, it, was just, it was easy to approach the politicians, uh, media journalists, um, influencers, or people like Sheriff Lamb. It was just a great turnout just to connect and share our names and listen to other people's stories. Because there was, all, there was other people there, too, that just showed up because they needed their story to be whole, um, heard. I had I interviewed a young girl. She was 14 years old. She lives in the state of Washington, and she's a Jewish woman, and she's white. So she's white. I mean, it doesn't, I, mean I don't care what she's, she's white or Jewish, but the state of Washington in her school, she deals with two mental illnesses. And she's mm-hmm. not able to wear a mask because of that, because it, it impacts her, like, for, because of you need to breathe, depending on some sort of mental illness, because it could bother you, especially how it bothers you psychologically. psychologically. Do you, so I, I'm going to focus on that a second. People who don't want to wear masks are considered uh, some sort of mental illness, so they need to have a waiver for it, for, for a mental illness. That seems ridiculous to me. It kind of seems like if this girl doesn't want to wear a mask and she's uncomfortable wearing one, that's normal. That's not a mental illness. Oh, yeah. So to finish it off, the school, and she's actually very intelligent. She, had, uh, I can't think of what, her, what her, she said or her mom said. The interview's on my YouTube. You go to JFK report. But the school pretty much blacklisted her, and they put her in a class. She's only 14, 
and she's taking advanced math and science classes, but she's very intelligent. They they forced they forced her to go take classes with seniors that are failing school. Hmm. And she's been harassed by community members, school board members, and Antifa's even came after her. And she's only 14. And they did nasty hit pieces on her. And one of her community members said she had to get rid of her disease, inferring to her Jewish religion, her Jewish faith. And she's only 14. But she went there. She, her parents drove from Washington State to go to this event just to find guys like me, Charlie, she was even able to go in to speak of Charlie. She went from, after she went to one thing, someone else heard about her. Like, no, no, come on my show, come on my show. So this is the type of event it was. It was, so there, what I'm getting at, there was people there that just needed to share their story of what's going on in this country that's not being involved or talked about. And they went to that event to spread it. And I was able to speak to other people too. There was this attorney. She, she's from here in Arizona, Ali Schultz. She is fighting for patients that are being held against their will at hospitals. You can, the ho hospitals are getting so tyrannical now that they're holding people against their own will. And they're doing it's even worse now because of the COVID thing. When can, last time I checked, a hospital can't, they can't hold you against your own will. They, when can a hospital hold you? They're not a jail, they're not a prison, they're not a court system. Court system. So that, that's the type of people I was meeting there, just to try to share their story. I was able to get interviews of smaller people that I just wanted to share. And that's why it's important for guys like you and I, because we're not mainstream media, but when we were working locally, we could find these people to share the stories. And when someone from a bigger account, they see it, then they share it. Because we're the voices for these people that, you know, we're, we're easy to come up to. They know who we are. We're not big names. They hear about us like, hey, I got this. Let's go cover it. We share it because we have a big following and someone else on the bigger account follows it and shares it. We are working in a system where the mainstream media is disingenuous. They don't want to have any of these stories. It destroys their own narrative. They're not going to tell the truth. And when we go out there, we interview real people. We know it's anecdotal from where we live, but these are real people's stories and they need to be heard. And if the media was legitimate, they would be talking to these same people listening to these stories. Yes. And that, that 14 year old girl, I almost, if you find the video, it's on my YouTube, I almost got into tears. It was just to be 14 years old and to be treated that way. Yeah. That's disgusting. That's really disgusting and how the school boards are treating her. Well, this is happening nationwide as well. Yeah. So her story is more important than just to her. This is a story that is the similar story of almost every school kid in America right now. Oh yeah, it's, it's bad. And we're, we'll get through it though. That's why we have people like you and I in these events. So we kind of like switch gears a little bit. There were a lot of booths there. I thought the booths were kind of like, and eh, they weren't as cool as CPAC. I'll be honest, okay? But people did good work on the booths regardless. What I thought was amazing is that a Twitter account that has repeatedly slandered myself and my friends and other oh, conservatives, yeah. Arizona Right Wing Watch was there doing original content taking pictures and videos. And I want to thank Arizona Right Wing Watch for posting those because now when I go home, we're going to be able to get your face. We're going to be able to find your name. And I'm looking forward to interviewing you personally. Hiding behind anonymity, not cool, especially when I slander people. I don't wear a mask. I put my face out there. And I hope that you're brave enough to do that too when I come to interview you. And you, funny how you mentioned that because I remember actually when I was interviewing people and talking to people, I remember seeing people slowly walking past me and they had like a quick camera and it went like that and they just walked off. Yeah. They had people working. There were there. a couple strange people there. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, you showed me that one on Saturday night, Nick Martin. He has oh, a blue yeah. check mark. He, he's written a couple of things on me. He doesn't yeah, like he's me. big man. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, don't, they don't like guys like me <laughs> and Grayson who actually do real journalism, real documentation, actually ask real questions. We didn't even go to school for it and we're actually doing real work. And they get mad because we're actually doing real work and they they got to dox us and write hit, hit pieces on us. And they were just mad that Turning Point USA gave me press credentials, even though I know people personally inside and people and they know I'm a good dude. Yeah, you are a good guy. You you are kind of cringe sometimes, oh, yeah. okay? Yeah. But for the most part, you're not out there with these insane ideas that are so esoteric that nobody can get on board. You're actually just telling the truth. You're reading things. You're like, oh, I discovered this... Uh, American value historically that we've forgotten in many ways and yeah. you're just like here it is. Yeah, I mean you see my books right here and 
you know, I got books down there. I mean, the camera probably doesn't see them. I got a bookcase here, you know, I just read and I do research and I watch a lot of uh, history documentations and history podcasts and just listen. This is the podcast. Podcast is just the next big thing, especially when you got historians doing podcasts. Yeah. That's it's the, about doing the podcast right, though. Everybody's trying to do a podcast. So many people suck mm-hmm. at it. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I'm, I think my favorite interview, though, the whole time, I think I did over 15 of them. It was probably the interview with Mega Hawk. Yeah, talk about the, the MAGA Hulk interview. I think that's probably your most excellent one. Oh, yeah. I, so he personally knows Davey, our friend Davey Michaels. And I saw him. Yeah. I, I walked up to him like, hey, excuse me. So I'm, like, I'm good friends with uh, Davey Michaels. He's like, oh, really? I'm like, yeah, where's he been? I'm like, well, he got censored off uh, Instagram from Big Tech. He's like, no way. I gave him my phone. He called him up. And they started talking. And we did an interview. And it just went off from there. And, and what I personally did when I was interviewing black American conservatives. I interviewed uh, two or three of them. One of them, my biggest questions that I asked was, what are your thoughts and beliefs on the white liberal? And okay. they, they all kind of cracked a smile and, you know, and they were giving their thoughts on it. So yeah, Megahawk's just a great dude. He's huge, works out. He's masculine. He has a great show. He's very conservative. You know, he loves Jesus Christ. Well, he's like the Hulk. That's, that's oh yeah. He's, he's, he's bigger than David. Yeah. Taller and just Whew, we, we, I thought Davey was huge. This guy's huge. <laughs> but he's just a nice guy in general. You know, it was just great, the humbling experience to interview these people and, and pick their brains and share their beliefs so other people could see, like, hey, it's time to start sharing these true values so people can start seeing, like, no, no, no. This Were you able to ask these black conservatives about CRT? For, for white Americans, I think CRT is pretty obvious what it's about. Yes. But it, for uh, non-white Americans, it's a bit more ambiguous for how they interpret CRT. Mm-hmm. So what, what do they have to say about that, if you asked? I didn't ask them about CRT. But the next time I go do these bigger events, I could start getting deeper into that. But I did ask a couple politicians about were candidates running for Congress about CRT. And I know... Uh, I talked to Jerome Davis and Josh Barnett from out of here from Phoenix. They're running for Congress here. And we're going to get them elected in the office. And I asked them about CRT. They said they're not going to deal with it on the federal level. They're going to have the states handle it, you know. so hmm. That's uh, not a good thing right there. A lot of our states, you can look at gerrymandering here in Arizona, yeah. are set up in such a way of they have a large portion of the city connected into a rural area so that that portion of the city, which is liberal, will change the entire outcome of this county who would usually be very conservative. So all this conservative rural area, hundreds of miles, is now dark blue due to a fraction of the city included yes. in that voting map. Because CRT needs to be illegal federally. Because actually, since we have the 14th Amendment, even though you know some people kind of cringe at the 14th Amendment, but we actually use the 14th Amendment to our advantage. It's, they're using it against white Americans, especially now with everything going on. And that's I guess the 14th Amendment. They're, yeah. That, that's what it's actually doing in John when you, when you know, I'm, I'm actually in school right now studying to be a professor. I've seen my own peers in my class talking about white people and, and colonizers and saying soft racism stuff about it, referring to white people. Then when I read my textbook, they have communism agendas in those textbooks. Yeah. CRT is pretty obviously anti-white. And that's why I kind of asked about what did uh, non-white conservatives really think about CRT because I've interviewed a few of them at TPUSA and um, I'm going to be posting that interview later because I got to do some editing with the audio but it really seemed to me like uh, non-white American conservatives they don't want CRT they're against it but when they articulate why it's for a completely different reason than white Americans who feel attacked based on their race and their skin color because that's the feeling for a lot of white Americans I've been around talk to them they they do feel personally attacked by their skin color. And saying yeah. that is just the truth. This is how people are feeling, how they're interpreting it. I couldn't agree more, especially after what I've seen and dealt with in college right now. So back to TPUSA, we kind of went on a, a side thing a bit, but it was related because we talked to them. Uh, I'm going to go to future ones. This is a very good event. Yes, and as I said before, they're going to get better. And they're going to get We bigger. need you to go. We need America first people to go. We need uh, people who are aligned kind of like proud boys. I love those guys. You can't associate with them, but I can. And I love them. Uh, we need more. Uh, maybe some of the groipers. You groipers. Awesome. You guys do a bunch of great work on the ground. Yeah. 
I, I, I forgot the rest of the group names, but we need more of you guys who are out there that I saw at the Million Magnum Marches in Washington, D.C., all these different groups. Come to these TPUSA events, CPAC as well. Your influence there actually has real value. These people are already elected, not the ones that are running, people like Matt Gates, uh, et cetera. They will be able to hear what you have to say. You're going to be able to network them, and you're going to be able to change the culture and the values of TPUSA from being less of... George Bush 43, and more like, uh, say, Theodore Roosevelt. Yep. And that and the, the way to get this done is you have to fight for it. So all, all the people you mentioned, you start getting more active. You start sending emails, social media. You're, you're messaging different accounts that associate Turning Point USA. And you don't wear, it's let's say you're whatever group or organization you're supporting, don't wear that stuff so they don't kick you off for being a group. Just show up and start influencing people. Start just start showing up, and just go and go and just keep getting it bigger and bigger. Wear a suit. Wear a suit. Yes. When in doubt, wear a suit. Yes, exactly. Wear a suit. Be professional. Stay organized and be tactic, tactical. Because other than that, they could get you in. You know what? I think that's the next step for the. I think that's what we could do. We could accomplish for next year is start getting these people to come. Yeah, the next definitely. One. Uh, I'm. I know that the anti-Christian organization ADL have uh, attacked me. They said I was a groiper as soon as I came back from China. And I'm, I was never really bigly associated with the whole groiper movement. But because of the anti-Christian ADL, I'm, I'm known as a groiper because of them. And when I went to TPUSA, people who have read that, were they liked me. So if you go there and you're polite and you wear a suit... People want to hear your ideas and your values. Yep. I mean, that's, that's how I was able to get in. I mean, you know, there's a couple of things that might seem radical from what I talk about for being a, a philosopher, but I know people inside and they've actually met me in person. I've been doing this work for a while now and they, they, they know you, they know I'm a good dude. It's just being professional and just being grateful that you're there and just talking to people and networking. hundred percent. Yeah. It was other than that. I mean, it's what's next CPAC. And yeah, CPAC is going to be epic. That's for yeah, sure. I won't be able to go to that, but it'll be great. Uh, much what I've noticed are future. So I think I think we're uh, good on, on wrapping up a bit. And I think uh, some of my ideas for the future on CPAC are the values I'm going to be pre promoting is a more Christian centric focus uh, at CPAC. I noticed that it was very secular Christian. It was Christian aligned, but it was very secularish. Mm -hmm. yeah, I saw a lot of crosses and crucifix, you know, but. They weren't talking about it. Yes. Yeah, so my values that I'm going to be promoting there at future events is people need to get saved. They need to repent. A vast majority of our problems in America were created because we moved away from Jesus Christ. Couldn't agree more. You got to put Jesus first and God first. And to really put America first, you have to put God first. Because this country was founded under God. And we've, we're losing our godly values, and that's why we're seeing all this decaying and demoralization in this nation. Yeah, uh, God actually says in the Bible, and I don't know the exact quote, but I'm sure people will look it up because they want to disprove it. I mean, Jeremiah, the book of but, Jeremiah speaks about it, you know, sending famine, sending yeah, foreigners to your nation. For that's it. what I was going to, to reference, is that when you turn away from Jesus Christ, you turn away from God, God's going to destroy your nation by sending endless waves of foreigners into it. And it's in the Bible, and it's what's happening to America right now. Oh, yeah. It, it, well, it was a great turnout. Uh, thank you, Turning Point USA. <laughs> yeah. well, thank you, TPUSA. Great event. Great event. I had uh, kind of a negative outlook going into it, and I'd have to say that you guys did an excellent job because I was very impressed. Oh, yeah. And we're, we'll be ready for the next one. And we're hoping, it, it, you know, and I've been hoping that it's, it's going to be bigger. And I think with everything going on, we're going to start seeing... You know, guys like Charlie Kirk and the big names for Turning Point USA start letting people back in. They, we need all we need. We need more people. It's time to put America first. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be putting out stuff on my channel, inviting people to these future events. And the more of my guys we can get there, the easier it will be to influence the leaders of TPUSA into adopting yes. a more conservative pro-Christian values. And before we actually hop off, this, before we hop off too, is what I really enjoy, enjoy about it is all the young Americans. There was even people under 18 there yeah it's it's time for our generation because you're still part of our generation from you're 35 saying, to younger you're saying i'm old 
No, well, I know you're not 35. I'm right. just, I'm just, I'm kind of giving. It's time for our generation to take control because you're looking at all these politicians, all these professors, everyone getting elected and putting into these positions. They're all in their 50s and 50s and 80s. It's time to put our generation, and it's time for us to take control. We we know in our generation, we know what we want, we know what we need to do. We're done with the wars, we're done with CRT, we're we're done with the socialism movement. We want to put God first. We we want to just bring back this nation where it needs to be. 100%. 100%. Well, guys, if you want to follow me, I'm the JFK Report. The JFK Report. You can find me on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Telegram. American Grayson, official pure politics. Like and subscribe. All right. God bless America.